Hey guys, my name is Third Eye and today we'll be talking about exploited artists after their deaths. Taking the example of many famous artists such as Michael Jackson and Extentacion. First of all, I want to tell you what the expression exploited artist really means. When a famous artist dies, usually his estate or and his family want to release unfinished or finished music or any projects that he was looking forward to publish. Having said that, it is no wonder that the estate or family of famous artists like Michael Jackson, Extentacion, Mac Miller or Lil Peep have decided to release posthumous music after their deaths. I don't have anything against posthumous music, as long as all the release projects only contain finished music by this artist or unfinished music that this artist was looking forward to publish. But what I do not respect is the release of demos or scrap tracks that were not finished because this artist didn't want them to be released. What I just told you could be considered the definition of exploiting an artist. To sum up, exploiting an artist means releasing things like demos or scrapped unfinished tracks that this artist didn't want to be released. To give you examples of exploited artists, I'm gonna be revising all the released posthumous music by two big artists, Michael Jackson and XXX Tentacion. Michael Jackson died on the 25th of June 2009, and his first posthumous album was released more than one year later, on the 10th of December 2010. This information will be relevant to compare to XXX Tentacion later in the video. This album was called Michael, and it contained 10 tracks. With all this information, a normal person could think that th he was not exploited at first. But this would be true if this album didn't contain three fake tracks, all sung by an impersonator called Jason Malachi. The reason why Sony, the estate of Michael Jackson, decided to include three fake tracks is unclear, because it has been confirmed that there are hundreds of unreleased MJ tracks, which could be part of at least 10 albums. Sony tried to wash their hands with the release of another posthumous album four years later in 2014. This album was called Escape and it had eight tracks and none of them were fake this time. Its deluxe edition contained the original versions of the songs on the album, which were the ones that Michael Jackson worked on. I have to admit that this album was very respectful to Michael Jackson, but I still think Sony was exploiting him a lot, because this record was only released to make people forget about the disaster that was the first posthumous album. Since then, Sony has not released another record with unreleased tracks, and it has been 6 years already. Now let's move on and talk about XXX Tentacion, an even greater example of how artists can be exploited after their deaths. He died on the 18th of June 2018, and it has only been two years since his death, and all the music that he left behind has already been released in two separate albums. The first one was released on the 7th of December of the same year, only six months after his passing. This album was released really quickly if we compare it to Michael's. It was called Skins and only contained 10 tracks, making the album less than 20 minutes long. Most of the songs were with the style that XXX Tentacion left behind, with two choruses and one verse, but the problem came with the final songs. Staring at the sky, I don't let go and what are you so afraid of, barely contained a verse and the chorus only had the same phrases repeated over and over. This song just felt completely unfinished. For his next posthumous project, Bad Vibes Forever, which was released one year later in the 6th of December 2019, this problem was even worse. His only participation in most of the songs was singing the chorus, which contained the same phrases repeated over and over. The many features of this album only served to complete the verses, and the many featured artists of this record were people that weren't even close to X while he was alive. Due to this quick release of two posthumous records in almost two years, as I already said, all the demos and projects that he left behind have completely run out, and also due to this bad production and the unfinished songs, these albums have been hardly criticized by a lot of YouTubers, such as Anthony Fantano, who gave Skins a 2 out of 10, and Bad Vibes Forever a 0 out of 10. I want to finish this video by talking about Juice World, a well-known rapper who passed away on the 8th of December 2019. While I was listening to his second official posthumous release called Tell Me You Love Me, I found a comment that said, they're using his name only for views at this point. 
I felt in the need to answer it because I think that this comment tells the truth about most of the posthumous music of any artist that has died, but not of Juice World. It has been six months since his dead, and since then we have enjoyed a few songs with the Juice World feature, such as Godzilla, No Me Ame, or PTSD, or even his official posthumous songs like Righteous or this new song. All these songs have had very respectful tributes to Juice, and they are finished songs that he was looking forward to publish. So far, Juice World is not being exploited so hard like X was, and I hope this stays like it is now, and his estate doesn't milk his debt like many others have done. Bye.